Hello everybody. Today I want to talk about Mesmer the Impaler. Mesmer the Impaler. Mesmer the Impaler is a demigod from the world of Elden Ring. And he has been confined to the Land of Shadow. We met Mesmer in the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. And learned his story. Or at least some of it. So this video is going to be about Mesmer, but the amount of information in the game about Mesmer directly is a little bit lacking. So if I only covered Mesmer directly, this would be a uh, relatively short video. So I'm also going to direct some attention to the Fire Knights, who are the personal soldiers of Mesmer. So this video is going to be about Mesmer the Impaler, and the knights that he personally oversaw. So to start with, we need a little bit of background. And we get a little bit of background from the story trailer released for the game, in which a character that we now know to be Needle Knight Leda says, Mikola the Kind spoke of the beginning, the seduction and the betrayal, an affair from which gold arose. And so too was Shadowborn. What followed was a war unseen, one that could never be put to song, a purge without grace or honor, the tyranny of Mesmer's flame. So, we learned from this that Mesmer carried out a purge, an unseen war that was done without honor, and that was never put to song, or, which is to say, forgotten about, essentially. Intentionally purged from history. So later in the expansion, we speak to Needle Knight Letta again, and she gives us a little bit more information. Long ago, Queen Merica commanded Sir Mesmer to purge the Tower Folk, a cleansing by fire. It's no wonder the horn scent holds the Erd Tree in contempt. That aside, man is by nature a creature of conquest. And in this regard, the Tower Folk are no different. They were never saints. They just happened to be on the losing side of a war. So from this we learn that Mesmer carried out his crusade against the Tower Folk, a people also called the Hornsend. And we meet a Hornsend NPC in the expansion. And this is uh, what he says, one of the things that he says. But first, clear sounds the call of vengeance. The Impaler Mesmer must pay his due in vengeance for the flames. My blade I wield. How could I allow myself to forget? Revenge alone 
assures me peace of mind. So he is uh, seeking vengeance on Mesmer. And if you uh, uh, defeat Mesmer in the game without summoning the Horn Scent to help you kill him, the Horn Scent says this. What cruelty is this? Who would rob me of my one vital purpose? Am I so feeble, witless, dull of blade, that vengeance was never to have been mine? O oh mother, O oh most cherished wife and child, it seems vengeance was not mine to enact. Where now should I point my tired blade? So from this we see the first-hand effects of Mesmer's crusade, that he killed the entire family of this Hornsend, and the Hornsend then devoted himself to vengeance. We also meet another Hornsend in the game, the Hornsend Grand Dam, and she is a uh, quite uh, angry at Mesmer, understandably. And uh, this is what she says when she meets us. Who art thou, stranger? By the look of thee, another of Mesmer's peons, methinks. Tell me, does thy kind never grow weary? How do these old bones fascinate thee yet? Our lands were by thy kind set aflame, our tower by thy kind veiled in shadow. Thou camest, robbing us of all, spoiling all. Have ye not basked in these deeds long enough? I implore, vessel of my of the sacred beast, have my son accompany thee to war and dance thy dance of beauteous color. Take vengeance upon Mesmer and his lot, they who betrayed us, I, they who burned us. Let them face thy wrath, their just deserts. So, you can hear there uh, her fury and her anger at Mesmer and at our character, the Tarnished, for being associated with the Erd Tree. And then she uh, implores us when she thinks that we are of her own people to uh, take vengeance upon Mesmer. And uh, this is kind of, I think, enough background coverage, you have sort of a sense of how Mesmer fits into uh, the realm that we're exploring, that he was the uh, the leader of this crusade against the Tower Folk. And now I'm just going to go through uh, pretty much every item in the game that references Mesmer. Um, not necessarily every single time that he's mentioned. There's a few times where, you know, it's just the horn scent or somebody kind of railing against him, and it doesn't really provide much new information, so... Uh, but most, every time that he is mentioned, I will have, uh, I have collected them into this document. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just read through them. And uh, occasionally I might editorialize a bit, but I'll try to mostly just let the items speak for themselves. So first, uh, here, kind of focusing on um, crafting materials and such. First up is the Black Pyrefly, 
fiery butterfly with black cinder wings, material used for crafting items, flies in war-torn lands that have been scoured by Mesmer's flame. They burn in dark and slender ribbons of fire. Ember of Mesmer Serpentine, cord-like ember Material used for crafting items Mainly found in Shadow Altis A remnant of Mesmer's flame, the symbol of the crusade It continues to smolder as if crawling across the ground. So, you'll hear uh, words like serpentine used in connection with Mesmer's fire. And uh, that is for good reason, as we will come to discover later. Mesmer fire grease. Solidified knot grease made from a mixture of incendiary materials. Craftable item. Coats armament, adding heavy fire damage to attacks. The effect lasts only for a short time. Fire was a symbol of the crusade, and even Mesmer's rank-and-file soldiers would wield it. Furnace Visage A smaller imitation of the Furnace Golem's visage Material used for crafting items Exceedingly rare to find A stone mask surrounded by curled horns Depicting the fell god of fire That haunts the sagas of the Hornsend Fire Coil A device of fire used by Mesmer's soldiers Lingering embers bundled into a coil Craftable item Uses FP to conjure tiny fire snakes from the spot that it is thrown The writhing snakes pursue foes Fire was a symbol of the crusade and even Mesmer's rank-and-file soldiers would wield it. Blessing of Merica A special physic blessed by Merica, the queen of the Erd tree. Completely restores HP and heals all ailments. Merica once created Several of these physics, for Mesmer's sake, but never again. All right. Now we have the Crusade Insignia Talisman. A talisman depicting a raised spear on a backdrop of flames in remembrance of the lives lost in the sacred crusade led by Mesmer. Raises attack power after defeating an enemy. The warriors who fought in the crusade set aside both honor and mercy to wantonly impale and scorch those deemed impure. Those who felt invigorated by each cry of death were the same men who were certain of the sanctity of the campaign. Fire Knight Quiline Spirit Ash Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell, used to summon the spirit of Fire Knight Quiline. Attacks immediately after being summoned. Spirit of a knight granted relief by the Iris of Grace. Wields a spear-like greatsword that impales foes upon fire, keeping the taint of impurity away from fair Mother America. That grace was his salvation. 
though it was but a fleeting blessing, and having been saved, all that was left to him was to wage war. Quiline's Great Sword Great Sword of the Fire Knight Quiline A weighty, piercing sword With a blade that undulates like fire Quiline devoted himself to the crusade And remade his great sword in the shape of the lance Wielded by his liege Aspiring to become a second impaler Hefty Furnace Pot Craftable item prepared using a capacious cracked pot imbued with a hex of the furnace. Throw at an enemy to create a whirlwind of flame. The furnace's flame burns away both the body and soul. When impurity is thus expunged, one calls it cleansing. Now I put those items in close proximity to each other because the uh, Crusader Talisman uh, describes how uh, the warriors fought in the Crusade to impale and scorch those deemed impure. And Quiline's Ashes talk about keeping the taint of impurity away from America. And, uh, the hefty furnace pot talks about when impurity is expunged by uh, burning away both body and soul. One calls it cleansing. And later on, when we get to Mesmer's armor, you will hear that uh, it describes the crusade as a cleansing crusade. So, just some words that, uh, I think are clearly intentionally chosen to uh, cross over between these items. Anyway, moving on. Remembrance of the Wild Boar Rider. Remembrance of Commander Gaius, hewn into the Shadow Tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the Finger Reader. Alternatively, it can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. Both were as elder brothers to the lion, and both were cursed from birth. In spite of, or perhaps because of this very reason, Gaius was both Mesmer's friend and the leader of his men. So here we learn about a companion of Mesmer, and we'll learn about another one now as well. Remembrance of the Twin Moon Knight. Remembrance of Ralana, the Twin Moon Knight, hewn into the Shadow Tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the Finger Reader. Alternatively, it can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. Once a Carrion princess, Ralana disavowed her birthright and chose to stand at Mesmer's side instead, knowing full well that not even the brilliance of the moon could grant him succor. Before long, she became known as the Sword of Mesmer. Her weapons are Ralana's twin blades. Carrion light greatsword embedded with blue glintstone, weapon of Rolana, the twin moon knight. Two swords as a single armament. When two handing, a straight sword engraved with golden flame will be carried in the left hand. Here, and here alone, were moon and fire ever together. So, uh, that seems to indicate to me, this is my interpretation, it could be wrong, that Rolana and Mesmer
Jasper uh, were in a relationship, or at least that Ravana was uh, romantically interested in Mesmer. If she is represented by the moon and he is represented by fire, then uh, that line, here were moon and fire ever together. Um, but uh, this, this next item kind of supports that as well. Rolana's helm, ornate helm of Rolana, the twin moon knight, fashioned from silver steel. Rolana, or pardon me, the names, these similar names. R Ranala, head of the royal family of Caria, was said to have given her younger sister, who renounced her lineage to chase after Mesmer, a gift of lustrous black hair. The idea of Rolana disavowing her birthright to follow Mesmer uh, is interesting and listen out for when we get to the Fire Knight armor set later on because there's a very similar dynamic at play there. And uh, speaking of which, we're going to jump into the Fire Knights now. Starting with the Fire Serpent spell. Incantation of the Fire Knights under Mesmer the Impaler's personal command. Launch a serpentine flame that bends and curls in pursuit of its foe. Charging enhances potency. When the flame they received from Mesmer would not find purchase within them, the Fire Knights relied on fire incantations to honor their bond. Fire Knight's Cookbook A record of crafting techniques left by the Fire Knights who served Mesmer the Impaler Details the art of wielding fire for the benefit of soldiers setting out to join the Crusade Fire Knight's Great Sword Great Sword of the Fire Knights A long, slender blade that undulates like fire, blessed with a flame incantation. Further flame imbuement will amplify the effect and greatly increase the armament's power. Fire Knight Helm Pointed Helm of the Fire Knights under Mesmer the Impaler's personal command. Slightly increases maximum HP, stamina, and maximum equip load. Each and every knight hailed from a renowned family of the Earth Tree's upper echelons, but were shunned and chased from their homes after pledging allegiance to Mesmer as their master. So that description uh, is what I was referring to when talking about Rolana leaving her royal family to follow Mesmer. Sort of a similar dynamic at play. And uh, that description is also found on the Fire Knight Gauntlets and the Fire Knight Greaves. So we don't have to read those, but the Fire Knight Armor has a unique description. Armor of the Fire Knights, under Mesmer the Impaler's personal command. Distinguished by its red cape and twin golden snakes which adorn the neck. Enhancing incantations of Mesmer's flame. These were the only ones who truly knew Mesmer. His flames like serpents. The painful fate that accompanied his accursed form. As you are ascending the Shadow Keep to reach Mesmer, there are a few special Fire Knights that you will find on the path. Well, 
not all of them uh, blocking Mesmer, but in the Shadow Keep generally. One of those is Fire Knight Kood, and he drops the Winged Serpent Helm. Helm of Kood, Captain of the Fire Knights. A Winged Serpent perches atop it, enhances Fire Knight skills. The Winged Serpent is the token creature of Mesmer's military forces. It is a wise friend which keeps the base serpent at bay and holds its power in check. So that's an interesting dynamic, isn't it? These two serpents, the Winged Serpent and the Base Serpent, and it sets up a uh, a contrast between the two. Um, I'm going to read the, uh, the Fire Knight's seal now, because I missed that a moment ago, uh, and then we'll get back to the Fire Knight's proper. Fire Knight's seal. Sacred seal of the Fire Knights, who answer directly to Mesmer the Impaler. Enhances Fire Knight incantations of Mesmer. The emblem of Mesmer's army depicts a golden ring and the fire of his sacred seal. Back to the uh, named Fire Knights. When you defeat Wago, you get the Death Mask Helm. Helm of Wago, elder among the Fire Knights. Two warped death masks stacked one atop the other reduces FP used to summon spirits. Gnawed at by loneliness, the old man turned his attention to the spirituality of Mesmer's flame, using it in a rite of resurrection. Yet, the soulless bodies he brought to life were no comfort to poor Wago. So I haven't thought about that very much, but I kind of feel like that might be a kind of significant lore revelation or a thread to follow. I have no idea, but um, the idea that Mesmer's flame could be used to resurrect um, and, but yet be soulless, it's, it's kind of interesting, because we have this, uh, this concept of soulless bodies popping up uh, throughout the game, like the, uh, the mausoleums, the walking mausoleums, and, uh, Godwin, of course. But, uh, anyway... As you are trying to cross to the Rao ruins, you are attacked by another Fire Knight named Salza. Salza's Hood. Hood of Salza, Sage of the Fire Knights. A prodigy. Ooh. My uh, tongue got tongue tied trying to say that word. A prodigious amount of cloth wound around it giving the impression of a greatly swollen head, and wearing it increases intelligence. A disciple of the elder Wago, he refused to burn down an old ruin at the risk of his own life. And now, relating to Salsa, we have the Rain of Fire incantation. Incantation of Salsa Sage of the Fire Knights Summons a cloud of flame overhead that rains fire for a short time. Charging increases potency. Salsa's disdain for barbarism never waned. Even as he burned more villages and scorched more land than any other. So I'm going to pause here for a second and just uh, wonder out loud about a 
about Salsa because we only have these, uh, these couple of items that describe him. And, uh, well, there's one more reference to him in a different item. But, on the one hand, we have, um, this idea that his disdain for barbarism never waned, and that he burned more villages and scorched more land than any other fire knight. While at the same time we have this, this uh, event where he refused to burn down an old ruin at the risk of his own life. So those two things seem kind of contradictory, don't they? Maybe, um, you know, the fact that he's near the Rao ruins, um, it could suggest that he was happy burning down horn-scent towns, but the Rao ruins he saw as, um, I guess archaeologically significant or something, uh, you know, a good source of history. And so he didn't want to burn down those particular ruins. We know that uh, there's a church, the Church of the Bud, at the top of the Rao ruins that was burned down. So, anyway, I don't have an answer for that, but uh, just an interesting little uh, conflict in the descriptions. Alright, um, next, Fire Knight Hilda. Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell. Used to summon the spirit of Fire Knight Hilda, a spirit who belonged to the Fire Knights, an order which answers directly to Mesmer. Hilda swings a slender great sword and casts fire incantations. Hilda was a dear friend to Selza the Sage, and joined those who urged that the specimens be preserved. Hilda's ashes were enshrined as a charm to protect the storehouse. So there we have our last reference to Salsa. In the context of him seeming to um, want to do preserve the specimens, the great horned creatures we find in the storehouse. Uh, that is the end of the lore I have about the Fire Knights. And I'm not going to cover uh, the sort of foot soldiers of Mesmer's army, but there are two Black Knight ashes that I thought were relevant. So first is Black Knight Commander Andreas. Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell. Used to summon the spirit of Andreas, Knight Commander of the Black Knights. The Black Knights were the primary force of Mesmer's army. Their first leader was Andreas, a man endowed with great strength and command over the powers of the Crucible, and whose spirit in these ashes dwells. Though he remained a devout follower of Mesmer, after his flight from the Erd Tree, he would rebel after learning of his liege's serpentine nature. His righteous stand was rewarded with imprisonment in an underground tomb. Black Knight Captain Hugh Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell. Used to summon the spirit of Hugh, Knight Captain of the Black Knights. The Black Knights were the primary force of Mesmer's army. Second to their first Knight Commander was Hugh, a man with agile command of both twin blade techniques and the powers of the Crucible, and whose spirit in these ashes dwells. Though a champion of the Divine Beast Hunt, he followed his father, Andreas, into rebellion against Mesmer, 
and like his father, he too was imprisoned in an underground tomb. Mesmer mourned the loss of a brother in arms. All right, well, now we move on to the big man himself. These are the items that directly relate to Mesmer. So, first off we have Mesmer's Orb, an incantation of Mesmer the Impaler. Summons Mesmer's flame to form a giant floating orb. The orb soars toward a foe, crashes into the earth, and explodes after a brief delay. Charging enhances potency. Mesmer despised his own fire. Time and time again he hoped to rid himself of it. But ever did it burn. Spear of the Impaler Weapon of Mesmer the Impaler A great spear with a warp blade in the shape of undulating flame. Remade by the forging arts of the realm of shadow, this weapon can be thrown by executing a strong attack, dashing strong attack, or mounted strong attack. Charge the attack to produce flame on impact. Mesmer's Helm Black helm of Mesmer the Impaler, crowned with two intertwined winged serpents. Slightly enhances incantations of Mesmer's flame, as well as Fire Knight skills. The winged snakes were Mesmer's constant companions. They were there when the base serpent was sealed away behind his eye. They were there through his eternity of suffering. They will accompany him yet in his hideous new form, born when he destroyed the grace granted by his mother. They have accepted his fate as much as he. So, we see that uh, dichotomy again there with the winged snakes and the base serpent. Kind of interesting that, you know, they're both snakes, but they're not, um, they're not quite the same. There's this differentiation between the two of them, even though they're both snakes. I don't, I don't know what to make of that, but it's interesting. And the fact that the snakes have wings as well, right? It's kind of an unusual, an unusual trait. I wonder if it uh, is kind of symbolic of anything. Or if it could relate to anything else in the lore. Um, anyway, Mesmer's Armor. Black armor of Mesmer the Impaler, draped with a red cloak bearing his crest embroidered. On his mother's wishes, Mesmer made himself a symbol of fear, undertaking the cleansing crusade she desired. Quote, Direct thy maledictions, thine ire, and thy grief towards me alone. End quote. And his gauntlets and griefs just uh, repeat that last, that last sentence, so we don't need to read those again. It's kind of an interesting quote there, isn't it? Direct thy maledictions, thine ire, and thy grief towards me alone. Um, you know what, I, I think I'll talk about that a little later. Let's, let's finish reading, because we're close to the end. So when you defeat Mesmer, you get Mesmer's kindling. The kindling that burned inside Mesmer the Impaler. A dark thing eaten away at by a wicked serpent. Burns the ceiling tree said to be found at the old raw ruins. Mesmer, much like his younger sister, bore a vision of fire. So, uh, it's 
seems very likely that uh, Mesmer's younger sister is Melina, the character from the base game who um, kindles the forge of the giants with her own body. Um, and uh, it's, it's kind of interesting that these two siblings both have this um, this vision of fire in them. You wonder what it was about their uh, their creation that um, that has you know that would link them like that. I don't know. Now I'm, now I'm spinning out ideas about the Glowmite Queen. How people think that uh, Melina is the Glowmite Queen. Which, is, which I'm personally a believer of. Um, but she has flame, right? The, glow, the Glowmite Queen has, um, has the black flame. Um, it, it, all right, I don't want to go on a whole tangent here. Let's, let's keep reading the, uh, the stuff, so. Um, when you defeat Mesmer, and, uh, you fought him with the horn scent, he says, Upon his end, did you see Mesmer's face? Twas sublime, a very tangle of snakes. To think he dared to call us savages, when he himself was most base of all. So just a, uh, of course, a reference to the fact that Mesmer, in your battle with him, reveals his, uh, serpentine nature and unleashes the abyssal serpent. Um, alright. You also, when you defeat Mesmer, get the remembrance of the Impaler. Remembrance of Mesmer the Impaler, hewn into the Shadow Tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the Finger Reader. Alternatively, it can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. A malevolent snake writhed within Mesmer, and so his very mother plucked out his eye and put in its place a seal of grace. Yet, having done so, her fear compelled her to secrete away her child within the realm of shadow. Hidden away, keeping company with the original sin, and a hatred that would not be confined. Um, that's a very, uh, it's a very interesting description, isn't it? First off, it's, um, you know, some things I think when I finish reading. I'll sweep back to some of these ideas and just um, ramble a little bit so you can get the, you can get just the facts first and then you can hear me um, spout off my, my nonsense. Alright, um, when you are, uh, when you first enter Mesmer's chamber, you get a cutscene and in the cutscene he says the, fo the following. Mongrel intruder, thou art tarnished, it seemeth. Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of light? Yet my purpose standeth unchanged. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. And when you uh, reach phase two, you get another cutscene, and Mesmer says this, I will not suffer a lord devoid of light. Oh, mother, forgive me. And then he plucks out his own eye, or rather, uh, rather the 
seal of grace that Merica once replaced his eye with. And Mesmer reveals his uh, serpentine form, and he says, Soon tarnished wilt thou be taken in the jaws of the abyssal serpent shorn of light. defeats you in phase two, he says. O lightless creature, embrace thine oblivion, as shall I. And then when you defeat him, he says, Mother, America, a curse upon thee. All right. That is all that I have written in my document here. Um, so I guess I'll just talk a little bit about some things that I am thinking about when it comes to Mesmer. And I don't really watch lore videos. Um, I'm, I'm familiar with the big ones, familiar with like Vati. I know, um, Smotown, um, Reddit Oscar, uh, Hawkshaw. I'm kind of familiar with these people, um, just because they're such big names in the, uh, Souls community, but I don't really watch their videos. Um, in terms of Souls content, I watch, uh, really just, um, Zully the Witch because I find her insights into the, uh, kind of, um, uh, guts of the game to be interesting, and she discovers some interesting things that way. Um, and then I watch, like, Limit Breakers, who does, um, you know, m mechanical analysis. But in terms of lore, I, I really don't engage with, uh, the, uh, community at large. Not, not because, um, of any disagreements or dislike for the for the community, more just because I like um, I like thinking about it myself. You know, I uh, I like trying to come to my own conclusions, and then um, eventually, if there are good ideas in the community, they you know they filter their way to me, and I can kind of test them against my own and see like yeah, like I'm probably wrong on this thing. Um, it seems like this, the community has kind of got it figured out better than I do. So, all of that is just to say, I don't really know if any of these topics have been discussed, um, on YouTube, and if there is a, a kind of a definitive answer, or, or a better answer than what I have, but, and, and I don't even really have answers, I just have a couple of, um, couple of things related to Mesmer that I wanted to uh, talk about. And first, I think I want to bring up the timeline. And just kind of ask, like, what is the timeline of, um, you know, when was Mesmer born in relation to everything else? Um, when did he go to the Land of Shadow in relation to all the history we know? When I first started the DLC, my assumption was that America started, um, you know, started off in the Land of Shadow, and eventually uh, had Mesmer while there, and had him lead a crusade, and then kind of cut off the land. So Mesmer never, for instance, saw the Erd tree. However, as we learn from like the Fire Knights said, the Fire Knights all came from uh, nobility around the Earth Tree, and followed Mesmer into uh, his crusade. So, uh, it's just very interesting, right? Because serpents are blasphemous in the lore of Elden Ring. Uh, you know, they're associated with blasphemy, like Rykard. 
allowing himself to be uh, consumed by the serpent. And, um, but at the same time, Merica has this child who is serpentine. Um, granted, she pulls out his eye and uh, puts in a little seal to keep the serpent from getting out. But Mesmer was still clearly hated by the Erd Tree nobility, because why else would um, why else would they sort of disown their children for following Mesmer, right? So Mesmer seems like he was known, um, you know, in Lanedale, um, and disliked. Where it says, um, what does it say? Let me pull that back up. It says, like, when he learned of uh, Mesmer's nature. Let's see. Though he remained a devout follower of Mesmer after his flight from the Earth Tree, he would rebel after learning of his liege's serpentine nature. So that makes it sound like Mesmer's serpentine nature was hidden. I mean, maybe it's that dichotomy between the winged serpent and the abyssal serpent, right? Maybe, um, Andreas learned of Mesmer's abyssal serpent connection, and, and that was too far. Um, but, but, you know, the, the winged serpents were, um, were sort of okay, but still taboo by the people of the Erd Tree? I don't know. I don't know, it's interesting, right? Um, it also makes you ask, like, who is Mesmer's dad? Especially if, uh, you know, he and Melina are sisters. My thinking is that it's Radigan. Um, because of his red hair. And because, um... Is there any other reason? I don't know. Um, well, yes, there is another reason. It's because, like, um, Mikola and Melania are the children of Radigan and, um, and Merica, and they are both cursed. And, uh, uh, uh Mesmer and Melina are both cursed as well. Um, and so, you know, it seems like if, if Merica and Radigan are having these kids that are getting cursed when they have kids together, it seems likely to me that Mesmer, you know, especially with his red hair, is probably Radigan and Merica's kid. But if this is the case, it doesn't seem to line up with, um, Godfrey being Merica's first husband. So I, my kind of current working theory is that Radigan and Merica shacked up uh, earlier than we had previously believed. And they had Mesmer and Melina. And then later on, uh, Merica ditched Radigan for Godfrey had her time with him, and then went back to, uh, to Radigan later on. Is that a complicated enough, uh, family dynamic for, for a George R. R. Martin story, right? Um, but yeah, I, I mean, if that's the case, you know, wondering when Mesmer embarked on his crusade. I kind of wonder if um, he was around for the reign of Godfrey because he recognizes us as tarnished and knows to call us tarnished. But tarnished didn't exist until Merica divorced Godfrey, which would seem to indicate that Mesmer was around uh, the earth tree when Merica divorced Godfrey. Uh, I mean, you know, granted, of course, he could have just learned about the Tarnished a, a different way from the Land of Shadow, but, you know, that 
that doesn't seem quite obvious how that would have happened, considering the Land of Shadow is so locked away. It would be hard to understand how the communication got to him, right? Um, but, uh, I mean, if, if Mesmer was around for all of Godfrey's reign as Elden Lord, then he would have seen the crusade or the fight against the, the fire giants. And maybe that's what inspired his furnace golems, right? Because his furnace golems, Mesmer's furnace golems, have fire giant faces uh, placed on the, like, the thighs of the golems or the kneecaps or something. And, um, you know, if he had seen a whole war against the giants, perhaps that was what inspired that choice. Right? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Kind of interesting to, uh, to puzzle through it, though. Um, sorry if you can hear my, uh, my belly rumbling, by the way. I have not eaten for, uh, for quite a while. Um, but, yeah, something else that's kind of interesting is the quote where, from, um, Mesmer's armor, where it says, like, you know, put your maledictions onto me, as though he's serving as a, a scapegoat for Merica's actions. You know, Merica was the one who initiated the crusade. But... Um, you know, uh, Mesmer serves as the object of hatred for the Hornsend, right? All of their hatred should go to him. And there is a Hornsend spirit you can find very early in the DLC who says something like, you know, he's talking to his, his dead, um, comrades, and he's saying, like, give me all of your hatred, all of your pain, and I, I can fashion it into a malediction, um, to take our revenge, or whatever. And, um, you know, if that, if that's a possibility, then Mesmer serves as sort of a shield between Merica and these curses, right, because the hatred is directed at Mesmer, and thus never reaches Merica. And that malediction, by the way, my kind of thought was that that was the, um, the omen curse. That the omen curse is the, uh, is the, the malediction of the horn sent a sort of revenge against Merica for what she did to their people. Um, of course, it's also worth noting that if that's the case, then my whole, uh, mesmer stuck around past Godfrey theory doesn't really uh, line up with that because Moog and Morgoth were born during the reign of Godfrey, and so, uh, and of course they are omens, the omen twins. So, um, you know, they, that, that timeline doesn't line up. But, you know, I'm not committed to any of these ideas necessarily, just, just talking it out. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's all very interesting, the thinking about trying to put the pieces together. Um, it would be kind of messed up if, um, Mesmer was around in the capital for that long because of how hated serpents were, and so he would have just been this kind of the dregs of society for so long. But then again, you know, it's not like that's new for America's children, because she totally, um, just treats Morgoth and Moog like they're little monsters, you know. Locks them in the sewers, shackles them. So it's not like America has a problem with, uh, brutalizing her innocent children. You know, that's, uh, that's a funny thing, right? Like... The DLC gave us, gave us, um, insight into America's origins, and so, you know, helped paint her 
as a more sympathetic character, we can kind of see where her, uh, the original sin that was done to her, the trauma she went through. But, um, you know, don't get too sympathetic because, uh, America was a pretty horrible person in her own right, you know? To have your innocent little children be born and you lock them up in the sewers just because they have a couple of horns growing on them, you know? It's a pretty evil thing to do. There's just no, no amount of trauma in her history can uh, can justify such an evil thing. Um. But uh, but yeah, I'm just I'm rolling through my mind trying to remember if there's anything I wanted to say. I recorded a big chunk of this video and then, well, I recorded this whole video. And then I went to my computer and looked at the, uh, my recording software, and it had had a, uh, like an information overload or something, and hadn't recorded half the video, and so, that was not, that was not very fun, I lost, uh, lost quite a bit, but, um, but, but all of that is just to say that I said a lot of things that, you know, now I can't remember, did I say it that now or before, but. Um, yeah, well, I think, uh, I think I got out the important stuff. The, the important stuff, really, was, uh, was reading the lore. I was wanting to, uh, you know, give you the lore from the horse's mouth, so. That was a success. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about, uh, Mesmer. And, um. And I hope you enjoyed listening to me yap about the lore for a while. Just kind of ramble aimlessly. Um, thank you for watching and listening. Thank you for the, uh, the very kind comments that you leave in the comment section. Um, it means a lot. It's uh, very nice to see that, uh, that people are enjoying my videos. So thank you for that. And uh, I will see you next time.